लोगों की सरकार उद्योगपतियों की सरकार है वो सब जानते हैं हम भी जानते हैं आप भी जानते हैं जो प्रधानमंत्री हैं देश के जो प्रधानमंत्री हैं वो पॉलिटिकल कैलकुलेशन बहुत अच्छी तरह समझते हैं मेरे दिमाग के सवाल उठ रहा है कि अगर वो पॉलिटिकल कैलकुलेशन समझते हैं तो वो साठ प्रतिशत लोगों को क्यों गुस्सा कर रहे हैं फ्यूचर विल बिलोंग टू नेशन विथ ग्रेन्स नॉट गन्स एक तरफ से किसान को मजदूर को आप कमजोर कर रहे हो और उसके बाद जब वो कमजोर होगा जब वो खड़ा नहीं होगा अपने पैरों पे, फिर आप उसको अपने ऑर्डिनेंस की कुल्हाड़ी मारोगे मैं आपको बता रहा हूं बहुत बड़ी गलती कर रहे हो आप किसानों को मजदूरों को चोट पहुंचा रहे हो और आने वाले समय में वो आपको चोट पहुंचाएंगे Well, back after his 56-day sabbatical, Rahul Gandhi spoke in Parliament today and for the first time as an opposition MP in a no-holds-barred attack, the Congress Vice President slamming the Modi government's new land acquisition ordinance or bill now, which has been tabled in the Lok Sabha from Modi, mocking Modi's Achirin slogan to calling the government suit would Sarkar. Rahul Gandhi made an aggressive speech. But is this good enough to revive Brand Rahul? That's the big question. Good evening. Thanks very much for joining us on India Business Hour. Well, he's back then, Tara. That's right. He's back. And you know, in his 10 years as an MP, Shirin, he's spoken eight times. Today was the ninth time and perhaps one of the more forceful speeches. Well, I hope it isn't a one-hit wonder that we are going to see from the man. We hope that there is going to be more consistency from the new Rahul Gandhi. If this certainly is a new avatar of him. But it is a news-heavy Monday. Let's get started with the other top stories now. And straight to the market action where the bears are all over the Lal Street. Stocks being battered today with the Sensex losing nearly 2%. The Nifty breaking 8,500. The Sensex now has lost over 1,100 points in the last four sessions. The rupee sliding to a one month low against the dollar. The mood is nothing but somber across global markets. Stocks rally across Europe and the U.S. as investors cheer the unexpected stimulus from China. But Greece remains a concern. The country is running out of funds and could default on the IMF loan. Daichi Sankyo set to exit Sun Pharma to sell nearly 9% stake in the open market and raise over $3 billion. The block deal will be launched tomorrow. Sources say promoter Dilip Sangvi is likely to pick up half of Daichi's shares. The chairman of the Central Board of Excise and Customs asked consumers not to pay 14% service tax before the finance bill is passed, warns companies against charging higher tax. That's an exclusive. On the eve of Akshay Tritya, the government hints at an import duty cut for gold after import surge in March. CBC chairman says the higher duty could be an incentive for smuggling. That's a CNBC TV 18 exclusive. The Supreme Court refuses to hear the petition against the Green Tribunal order banning old vehicles in the national capital region, says it cannot interfere with orders passed by constitutional courts. The existing plant at Jatan may fall short, say 12, 12 months or 18 months from now. Um, so we thought uh, it's time to expand. Even a sales spotter, Rajiv Bajaj, is betting on demand to turn things around. Says a second manufacturing facility in Chakan will be up and running by next year. That's a CNBC TV 18 exclusive. Yes, I think India needs to continue to increase its health budget. And Padma Bhushan Melinda Gates speaks about her foundation's work in India, urges the government to improve spending on health care. Also says the United States is now ready for a woman as president. Let's go straight to the top story this evening. The bears are now all over the Lal Street as markets saw some deep cuts today. Weak earnings coupled with a sell-off across most Asian markets proved to be a deadly cocktail for our stocks as they were battered out of shape. Let's bring up the Sensex for you. We saw an over 550 point down uh, tick today. And look at the sell-off that came in towards the latter half of the trading session, uh, specifically in the last hour or so. The Nipsey also breaking below the 8,500 market was down 160 points in the process. And today, 
there was no place to hide. The mid-cap saw sharp cuts with the mid-cap index losing over 300 points. Now let's tell you about the markets in the last four trading sessions because they've been terrible for the bulls. The Sensex has lost over 1,100 points as the equity markets continue to take a beating. The mid is down 386 points and the mid-cap index over the last four sessions has lost about 700 points. Anna joins us now to wrap up the day's trading action. Anuj, we've seen a massive sell-off today. What has triggered this sell-off and should we brace ourselves for more pain from these levels? Well, the, the simple answer is that the market is technically weak. Today, the market would have fallen uh, in any case, even if you didn't have that kind of fall in Asia. Because, uh, you know, in the late trade, the European markets were, were quite okay and still the market was falling. This market, uh, the trend changed last week on Wednesday when the market was up and it lost pay. After that, it's really been brutal. The sell-off today was brutal, especially in the mid-caps. A lot of stocks fell about 5 to 20 percent and that really was telling you the kind of sentiment that the market has right now. In fact, it was broad-based in nature. Reliance led the sell-off, but IT, banks, capital goods, almost everything joined in in late trade. And as I said, it was really a terrible day for the mid-caps. In fact, take a look at some of the stocks that let the market down. We have a set of three, three heavyweights which let the market down the most. Reliance, HDFC and ITC. All of them down quite a bit. Reliance, in fact, was uh, down about 6% from the morning high. So clearly, a bad day for that stock. Apart from that, some of the stocks that let the market down, LNT, ONGC, Hindustan, Unilever. So as you can see, it's across various sectors that you saw losses in trade today. Not just that, uh, the next bit would tell you even more, Infosys, Hero Motocorp, Cipla, all these stocks falling between 2 to 4 percent. So across various sectors, leadership stocks were falling in today's trade. Banks, now that was quite a bit of uh, uh, interesting picture. In the first half, the bank nifty was outperforming, but in second half, even that stock or that sector was falling quite a bit. So Indusind, Axis, Yes Bank, they were all lower by about 3 percent by the end of trade. And finally, in the mid-cap space, first take a look at the high beta space. You had stocks like HDIL, Rolta, Reliance Communication, all losing between 5 to 10 percent. But the pocket that's most disconcerting to the bulls is the, the non-index uh, large cap stocks, hyper degree stocks which are falling, Mindtree, PTC, CESC. In fact, there were so many stocks like this which were falling between 5 to 10 percent, FNS stocks. So that would tell you the real level of uh, sentiment or the damage that's been done to the sentiment. Now, Will it continue? That's an interesting one because a lot of people believe that 8200 is the level at which the Nifty could bottom out, but consensus hardly gets it right. So it will be interesting to see if the market either bounces back even before that or actually goes on and completes a collection which is even bigger than 8200. So that's something that we'll be watching out for over the next few days. Right, thanks a lot, Anish, for joining us with that. It's been a manic Monday. What's triggering the sell-off and is there more pain in store? Manish Singh of Crossbridge Capital believes there are concerns over the parliament session and the sell-off could intensify if reforms take the back seat. Independent expert Anand Tandon fears the Nifty could fall below 8,200 if the downside momentum continues. But it's not all gloom and doom. Arnav Das believes that India is not heading towards a prolonged period of risk of trading. And the route in the equity markets spilled over into the currency markets as well, the Indian currency weakened to a one-month low of 62.91 against the dollar. And though it finally closed at 62.89, traders believe there could be more weakness in the next few days. Now, like we've been telling you, uh, the Lal Street reacted to cues coming in from the Asian markets, which were largely weak, that acted as a trigger for today's brutal sell-off from Shanghai to Hang Seng to Japan. Almost every index in the region ended lower, reacting to the Chinese Central Bank's decision to cut the CRR or the cash reserve ratio. On the other hand, the European and the U.S. markets are reacting positively to this so-called Chinese stimulus, but that's done little to lift sentiment. Sri J. Garaja brings us all the action from the Asian equity market, Sri. Volatility in China and Hong Kong stocks this Monday. Mainland China equity surrendered early gains and dropped by more than 1.6% at the close. As fears of a regulatory crackdown offset the central bank's boldest policy move yet to bolster the slowing economy. Securities regulators announced on Friday that they would allow fund managers to lend shares for short selling and ban margin financing through unregulated accounts. HSBC in a research note said that the 100 basis point triple R cut was more aggressive than expected and was clearly also aimed at neutralizing the negative impact from Friday's CSRC margin rules. The bank also reiterated its positive view on the eight share market and suggested rotation to financial stocks that are most geared towards ongoing monetary easing. Broadly, Asian market sentiment was soured by a decline on Wall Street. 
Now, thanks, Ashri, for joining us. With us, that's a wrap of the Asian equities. If you've had a sea of red in Asia, it's been a sea of green in Europe and the U.S. It's not China that's bothering investors over there. It's fears of a Greek exit from the Eurozone that have gained momentum. This after talks between Greek officials and the country's creditors over the weekend did not fructify. Many investors are doubtful that Greece will reach a deal with its creditors in time to avoid a default. The country is running out of funds and has to make a 780 million euro payment to the IMF in a few weeks. And Christine Lagarde is quite clear that payment has to be made. Greek banks are also risk running out of the collateral they need to keep accessing emergency funding from the European Central Bank. Meanwhile, the Greek finance minister in an interview said if Greece were to exit the Eurozone, it would be like a contagion. But like we told you, if Greece is not bothering investors for the moment, the European markets are rising in trade as we speak. Investors are cheering the easing by the China's central bank, hoping money will flow into equities across Europe. So look at that. The British FTSE up by almost 60 points. The French CAC up by 45 points. And the German DAX having a great day in trade up by about 203 points. Across the Atlantic, shares on Wall Street made a strong opening again thanks to the unexpected stimulus from China's central bank. You have the Dow up by 230 points. Now NASDAQ, meanwhile, up by about 55 points today. All right, back home, the big corporate story. Daichi Sankyo has announced that it will sell its entire stake in Sun Pharma. The Japanese major holds nearly 9% in the company after the merger between Ranbaxy and Sun Pharma. And sources say Sun Pharma's promoter Dilip Sangvi will buy nearly half of Daichi's shares. Nimesh joins us now with the details. Nimesh, this is not just a big deal. It's a massive stake sale. Is there a discount on the table? It's, it's a huge deal, you know, it's not a big deal, it's a huge deal. Three, three to three and a half billion is what Daichi Sankyo will raise by selling its entire 8.9% stake in Sun Pharma tomorrow. And yes, there is a discount as well. The indicative price, what we understand, is between 932 and, and 1048, which is a 0 to, to close to 11% discount to today's closing price in Sun Pharma. Now, the book size is of, of 21.5 crore shares. That's the entire what, uh, you know, uh, Daichi Sankyo holds currently in Sun Pharma. And that is what they're, they're looking to sell in the blog deal tomorrow. The book is launched officially for global investors and local investors today. Goldman Sachs is, is the sole book runner who is running the book on behalf of Daichi Sankyo. Now, the one speculation which has been doing the round since the morning was whether the Sun Pharma promoters will, you know, uh, tender or, or buy in this uh, block deal and increase the stake in Sun Pharma. That is something which is still a speculation. We don't know whether they will, uh, they will, uh, they will, you know, subscribe or they will buy some shares in, the, from, in this block deal. But we do know that Daichi Sankyo is looking to sell its entire 8.9% stake in the block deal tomorrow. The deal will get executed tomorrow. We understand that, uh, the, you know, there will be a combination of global and local investors will participate. But in terms of size, yes, it's a, it's a very large deal. Three to three, three and a half billion dollar is what Daichi Sankyo will raise by selling its entire 8.9% stake in the Anbaxi in Sun Pharma tomorrow via block deal. All right, uh, Nimesh, appreciate you joining us. So watch out for Sun Pharma. A massive deal expected uh, there on that stock as Daichi exits the merged entity. Now, the government had hiked service tax to 14% in the budget, but the hike has not come into effect since Parliament has yet to pass the finance bill. However, a lot of consumers are being taken for a ride with large parts of the industry already charging the higher service tax rate of 14%. The CBEC chairman has warned the industry against charging the higher service tax. Still, the finance bill and the notification from the government post the passage of the finance bill comes in. Listen. As of now, the rate still is 12.36% across the board, all industries or uh, all service sectors. So there is uh, meaning no, uh, if anybody is charging higher rate of tax, uh, that is wrong. It should be charged only at 12.36%. We have already issued instructions to our field formations that uh, it should be made known to the public by issue of public notices. If any instances of overcharging of service tax rate come into notice of uh, any members of the public, they are uh, welcome to report it to our uh, local officers. Well, Koshin Srivastava also told CNBC TV 18 that the government was keeping a close watch on the spike in gold imports. We'll come to that in just a bit, but staying with service tax, the government is not only clamping down on service providers who are starting to charge a higher service tax rate. We also learned that the Mumbai Service Tax Department is claiming dues worth nearly 2,000 crore rupees from 20 high-value cases. Prerna joins us now with the details. Prerna, which of the companies are under the scanner? 
Well, that's right. You know, we understand that the uh, Mumbai Commissionerate of the Service Tax Department has passed education orders against Jet Airways, Kingfisher Airlines and Sony and also Tata AIG and Kotick Mahindra Insurance are among the 20 high value cases that the department has taken up on priority. We also learned that the Mumbai Commissionerate has confirmed uh, total tax demand during FY15 amounting to 1850 crore rupees. Now, this is out of the 45% of the total tax demand that was raised by the commissionerate over the last few years. Now, talking about Jet Airways, uh, the department had issued seven show cause notices to the airline earlier and had uh, slapped a uh, tax demand uh, and it had raised tax demand am amounting to about 1700 crore rupees. But now the adjudication order confirms a tax demand of only 280 crore rupees, including penalty. Now, talking about Kingfisher Airlines, the adjudication order confirms tax demand on the airline of about 370 crore rupees, including penalty. And also, as far as Sony uh, goes, tax demand has been con uh, confirmed on the company, uh, amounting to about 268 crore rupees, and also another 248 crore rupees uh, to Tata AIG. So these are among the 20 high-value cases that the Mumbai Commissionerate of the Service Tax Department has taken up for priority and has passed final education orders. Back to you. Well, service tax demands are worth almost 2,000 crore rupees. Prina, appreciate you joining us with those details. But getting back to the CBEC chairman, for all of you who are planning to buy gold on Akshay Tritya, that's tomorrow, here's a quick check on how the precious metal is trading. 10 grams of gold continues to cost about 26,800 rupees, and jewelers could be in for a shot in the arm. Speaking exclusively to CNBC TV 18 Sapna Das, the CBEC chairman said that higher duty is a strong incentive for smuggling to increase, hinting that perhaps the rate could be cut gold imports had surged rapidly in the month of March. Customs officers have confiscated smuggled gold worth almost 1,000 crore rupees in the fiscal that just ended as compared to 700 crore rupees in FI14. This despite the government lifting import restrictions on gold last year in November. Here's the CBEC chief. Yeah, in March, the uh, volume of imports of gold have gone up vis-a-vis -vis the last three months, meaning from December, January, February which were the months after the last policy change when that 80 was scrapped yeah was that policy was scrapped uh, was withdrawn then from uh, there was a slump or decline in the volume of imports and monthly imports were significantly down so the increase in uh, march is probably on account of the reduced imports in the previous three months and because of the festive season also coming in. So uh, we don't uh, view it as a, uh, meaning the increased imports in March as a cause for worry uh, because the overall current account deficit is very much in control. Well, that's the CBEC chief saying that the government is not concerned by the spike in gold imports just yet, but may consider a review as far as the import duty goes. On to the big political story. It's a rocky restart to the budget session of Parliament. Back after his 56-day sabbatical, Rahul Gandhi spoke in Parliament for the first time as an opposition MP, the Congress Vice President ripping into the government's move to amend the land acquisition bill. The new bill was tabled in Parliament today. Let's take a look at the fireworks. After missing in action for 56 days, the Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi with the lazy stubble looks like a new person. An agricultural growth rate is 1%. In his post-sabbatical avatar, making his maiden speech in the parliament after NDA came to power. Gone were Rahul Gandhi's rolling of sleeves, jerky, absent-minded aggression. Addressing the parliament on farmers' plight in the country, Rahul made measured movements, talking in clipped sentences. The man looked to be in control of himself. Political calculation बहुत अच्छी तरह समझते हैं तो मेरे दिमाग के सवाल उठ रहा है कि अगर वो political calculation समझते हैं तो वो 60 प्रतिशत लोगों को क्यों गुस्सा कर रहे हैं? Dressed in a white kurta pajama, Rahul Gandhi, for the second consecutive day, took the fight right to Prime Minister Narendra Modi's doorstep. While he did falter, at dawn by the Congress young guns, he was quick to regain his bearing, a sign of a calmly confident person. 
प्रधानमंत्री जी जाकर अपनी आंखों से देख राहुल गांधी एक्यूज द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडल्जिंग इन डबल स्पीक जहां लोगों के दिल में दर्द है जहां उनको मुश्किल हो रही है क्यों नहीं वो जाकर वहां से बात कर ले On Sunday too with his mother by his side the new Rahul Gandhi trained his gun directly on the prime minister repeating the charge that his is a government of corporates first day first show was a flop and uh, you just said Rahul Gandhi is back what is that why is that a news i mean uh, isn't he supposed to be here uh, well if he is back it's good for him Rahul Gandhi has been accused of being an episodic politician someone who's non serious about issues and even if he raises issue he doesn't believe in taking it to its logical conclusion today as a new rahul was relaunched after that massive rally at ramleela maidan on sunday the tone and tenor for the second part of the budget session has been set aapki sarkar suit boot ki sarkar hai the congress may be in minority in the lok sabha but rahul's speech did manage to reaffirm faith in the congress that was losing faith in him and he did use wit directed at prime minister as a tool of political communication aap logon ki sarkar udyogpatiyon ki sarkar hai wo sab jante hain hum bhi jante hain aap bhi jante hain in new delhi maria shakeel Meanwhile, Congress President Sonia Gandhi said the party would keep raising farmer issues in Parliament. This after she held a meeting with party MPs during which the Congress Party finalised the issues it wanted to raise on the floor of the House in the ongoing week. I had all the delegations. Hello. 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 Well, that's Sonia Gandhi there. The opposition united on the issue of the land bill. Now, the Supreme Court has dismissed a petition filed against the Green Tribunal's order, which banned old vehicles from flying in the national capital region. The ban was enforced to fight the higher pollution levels in the capital. The apex court has backed the Green Tribunal's order. Ashmit joins us now with the details. Ashmit, it's clear, it's important to point out that this was not the appeal uh, made by the government. The government, of course, hopes to move the Supreme Court against the NGT order. Take us through who filed this petition and. what did the court say and does this now what is the window of opportunity this leaves the government with the court actually backing the ngt order well, indeed uh, given the sweeping nature of the ngt order it was expected that either the center or the delhi government will move towards the apex court to challenge the ngt order but it was neither one of these two parties today it was in fact a lawyer activist who had moved the apex court and he raised multiple concerns one he pointed out that the ngt he believed was acting beyond its jurisdiction two he raised the argument that in fact the local transport authorities are already issuing fitness certificates to ensure that vehicles are emissions compliant and finally he also raised the argument that enough work had already been done by the delhi government to tackle the menace of uh, air pollution but none of these arguments managing to cut any ice with the apex court the apex court holding that it did not see enough reason uh, to uh, to uh, to delve uh, to in fact to disturb the functioning of the ngt and on that note in fact it has outrightly dismissed this petition outrightly rejected this petition and has in fact uh, you know, by effect also upheld the ngt order banning older vehicles diesel vehicles older than 10 years petrol vehicles older than 15 years of course what this effectively does is that not only does it ensure that the ngt or uh, ban stays in place but it also limits the legal options that are available to the center or, or the delhi government in fact should they even consider that option they will have to keep in mind that a similar petition such as the one that was today has already been dismissed by the apex court so that will work against them so limiting of legal options in effect as far as the center and delhi is concerned but the sum and substance is that the ngt order continues to stay in effect and so does the ban the ban on diesel vehicles as well as petrol vehicles continues to stay in effect with this development from the apex court back to you So all eyes now on the government is agreeing to appeal against that NGT order. Thanks, Arash, for joining us with all of those details. A quick check of the other business headlines we're tracking today. The CBI moved the Supreme Court over the 2G scam. The agency claims it has uncovered fresh evidence in the form of audio tapes. CBI suspects 2G accused committed forgery to distance themselves from that scam. The Hyderabad Metropolitan Court has rejected Ramalingaraju's plea seeking a stay on the special court's order, which had found him and 10 others guilty in the Satyam scam. There could be another big scam brewing within the Indian railways the central bureau of investigation has conducted searches across multiple cities today in relation to various irregularities observed in the freight invoicing process 
All right, it is time for us to wrap up India Business Hour. It hasn't been a great day for our markets, uh, Asian markets looking weak as well. But for now, at least the global queues coming in from Europe and the U.S. looking positive. Will that uh, propel our markets towards a recovery or will the correction continue? And of course, the big stock to watch out for will be Sun Pharma, where we will see that big block deal go through. On that note, it's time for us to wrap up India Business Hour. For one of us here, goodbye. Many thanks for watching.